Hello, this is Shannon of EbonyGeek45 at gmail.com and this is gonna be um, a six news and slots tutorial so I'm gonna hope that I can get through this quickly so what you wanna do is in order to get to um, the screen is you wanna double click your QT creator icon you should come up to this point <coughs> excuse me and you want to hit file new project file project so that's new file project you're gonna come to this um, screen where you choose a template you want to choose applications QT GUI application and down here to choose now what I do is I like to create my projects under the name in caps so we're gonna put um, project to all caps and create in you wanna click the browse button and you wanna put your um, tutorial in a place where you can remember it um, I got so many tutorials it be kind of hard to remember where I put it so I'm gonna put mine here I'm gonna create a new folder and I'm gonna put it under practice 2 and I'm gonna get those caps off and practice 2 okay and I'm gonna click on that and then select folder okay we have all that done so we're gonna click next leave this as is and click next here you want to name your class and I'm gonna do it in camel case so in camel case is all lowercase for the first word and notice how it's populating your head of failure so it's found your form file all of those are created for you so it's gonna be practice and capital T and lowercase w oh and so the first word is lowercase and the second word start with a cap and the rest is lowercase now with all of that done you need not do well you want to leave your base class as is and we're just gonna leave it like that in other tutorials it will be different okay you come to your summary screen where you have your location and then project to the name of your project and then you have your main.cpp and your class.cpp class.h class.ui and your project.pro you want to click finish okay and it made all of those files for you as you can see um, your header file, your .cpp file, your main .cpp file and your pro, .pro which is, has to do with the building of the project so we're gonna go to this one the practice2.ui double click it okay and of course the first video we made show this only now our grid is empty okay so you've seen this before if you watch the intro okay so what we want to do is we want to do signals and slots more likely that will be empty we want to do signals and slots and in order to do that we're gonna go ahead and do our Q push button for our signals so we're gonna type because Q push button is a type we're gonna type Q P as you can see it's already came up so we're gonna drag our first one on top our second one on bottom specifically so we know where one and two is now let's go ahead we want our signal to emit to something well we want it to emit to a label so we're gonna type Q L for Q label and as you can see it's already came up so we're gonna go ahead and drag it 
Now, I'm going to pull this all a little bit because we're going to have a little bit in there. Okay. So, what we want, our Q, pu our Q push button is going to have our signals. So, knowing that, well, what do we do? We want to go ahead and set up our Q push button to have signals. And so we could click on edit and go down to edit signals and slots. We could do it that way. And take note of this F4 because either we could click on this or from this screen we could just press F4 and it'll do it. Or we could click on the second icon here, Edit Signals and Slides. So let's do it like that. Okay. So you know that it's in your editing signal slot mode when your widgets turn red when you hover over them. And then, of course, if you didn't have this up already, this will appear. And for now, it's empty. But we'll just watch it as we go. Now, let's start with button one. And what we want to do is we want to click on that and drag. We want to drag on the grid, not on the other push button or on the text label. Just on the grid. Okay. Once we do that, we get configure connection. And what we want to think like is, well, what do we want to do? Well, we want to click on the push button. So we're going to choose click. And here is where we know what our push button is going to do, but what do we want our slot to do? Here's where we're going to create a custom slot. So we're going to click on Edit. And then on this plus sign for slots, we're going to click the Add sign. And we're going to just type in button 1. That's it. And OK. As you can see here, that it is params. And so we want to click on it and OK. And our first button is set up with a signal. OK, so we're going to do the same thing with the second button. We're going to click on it and drag just on the grid. We know that we want to click on the push button, so we're going to choose click. We're going to do a custom slot for that one, so we're going to click on edit for the slots we're going to click on the plus sign and then we're going to type button 2 that's what we want to name it just button 2 and then we're going to click on OK OK and then we're going to click on the button 2 we just made for our custom slot and OK alright so now we have our signal set up we want to our signals to emit to our text label so we got to set up our text label so this is where we do coding so we want to double click to add it as you can see our XML coding is updating see it has the Q label Q push buttons I didn't do that it automatically did it as we added it on the UI so let's go ahead and go to our header file right here because now we got to declare some functions and what we're declaring is our slots right so we're going to get right up on the public you know after our public and we want to type private slots and colon you know you done it right when it changed that color and it indents out okay so let's hit enter because we're going to start our function out as a void because it's not going to return a value and our first custom slot was named button one then we're going to add our params and our colon and semicolon and we're going to do the same thing for button two and the params and our closing semicolon okay now here's something that's nice QT offers it to us so we're gonna hover, hover, hover over our first private slot and then we're gonna 
choose refractor and add definition in r.cpb and as you can see it auto generated the code to this our definition for that and I'm gonna put some spaces in there it auto generated some QT gives us so we're gonna click right up here cuz we want to go back down to our header file and we want to do the same thing for button 2 so we hover over button 2 we right click it refractor over to add definitions to the .cpp and of course it does the same thing for that one right now all we have to do simply is define our function so remember we said we have UIs UIs are nice things they're all for our Q types let us use them as objects so this is going to be a pointer. It's already set up. So we're going to start it all as UI. We're going to use the this operator, which is dash and a greater than symbol. Now, remember our slide is going to be we wanted to emit out to our Q label. Well, there go our label right there. Okay, our Q label label. So double click on that. And then our this. <laughs> our this operator, if I could get this right. What we wanted to do is set the text in our Q label. So let's go ahead and type set capital T for text. Now you could always scroll down and it'll show you all the functions available to Q label. But we want to go set text and choose it. In our params, what is expecting is a string and so we'll go ahead and put our double quotes because string is going to go in double quotes and we're going to put this is button one put a space in there all right and let's go down and quickly do the other one so of course it's pretty much going to be the same thing UI then our this operator and label and it says Q label label hit it and then we want to get our this operator up again and we're going to go set text and something I want to show you that I didn't show you before is that's a slot signal and then when you click on it it's telling you it's the set text it's telling you that a Q string is what it's going to be looking for. And so that's how you know what goes inside params, just like we did up here. So we're going to put our double quotes for our string, and this one is going to say this seals button 2. Okay, now we should be finished. Now, what we need to do now is run it if we have errors it's gonna come up right here so let's go ahead and run it now we have to save all because that's all the files that we changed here you see the build progress bra and it's gonna show you the progress of it building our project as it goes and it jump right there and should turn green any second now yes what is doing this is building everything and hopefully we don't have any errors we shouldn't and now it's done you are seeing that it's green um no errors here are window popped up and here's the moment of truth now now when we hit push button it should say what we have there in our params for our string this is button one so we're gonna go ahead and click on the push button and there it go this is button one then we'll click on this push button which is the second one it should say 
this is button two and that is how you could set up signals and slots a very basic example in QT and with that I'm gonna go ahead and end the tutorial and say uh, have a good day and happy coding bye bye